Hello friends, let us understand what do we mean by degrees of freedom. It is the number of independent ways in which a molecule or an atom can exhibit motion. Right? To make it more clear to you, observe this image. Degrees of freedom refer to the freedom of movement of a rigid body in three dimensional space. As we can see specifically, the body is free to move in forward backward directions, upward downward directions, right and left. That means it can show translational motion in three perpendicular axes combined with rotation about three perpendicular axes as well. So as you can see through the image, rotation is also possible and this rotation around the, this three perpendicular axis is often termed as pitch, yaw and roll. Okay, so when we consider tilting forward and backward, it is normally termed as pitch. When tilting side to side, it is termed as rolling up and when it is turning left and right, it is termed as yaw. Let us just consider a molecule containing n atoms. So the position of each atom can be defined by three coordinates x, y and z. So if we need to specify position of n number of atoms, we need to have definitely three n coordinates, right? And with reference to that, I can say the molecule has three n degrees of freedom. So this is an another form of degrees of freedom whereby what is degrees of freedom in the terms of coordinates I can say the number of coordinates needed to specify the position of all the atoms in a molecule is also termed as degrees of freedom okay now as far as the kinetic energy of molecule is concerned kinetic energy of molecule is due to three motions translational motion vibrational motion and rotational motion and accordingly, we have three different types of degrees of freedom related to these three types of motion of the molecule. If we consider the translational motion of the molecule, it causes change in the center of gravity of the molecule, right? So due to this change in center of gravity of the molecule, it is possible across three coordinates, x, y and z, right? Hence, there are three translational degrees of freedom. So initially for any molecule, we had 3n degrees of freedom and after subtracting this 3 translational degrees of freedom from it, so we are remaining with 3n minus 3 coordinate system and it represents the degree of freedom of rotational motion in combination with the vibrational motion, the two motions which we are left with, right? Now with reference to the rotational coordinate system, we need to specify it for two different types that is for linear type of molecules and for non-linear type of molecules. Let us consider a diatomic linear molecule whose molecular axis is coinciding with the z-axis. So in this case we can observe that there are two independent rotational coordinates perpendicular to each other and also to the molecular axis right that means one a uh, rotational degree of freedom is about x-axis as you can see and the other rotational degree of freedom is about y-axis, right? However, it cannot rotate itself across the z-axis as the molecule itself is lying across that axis, right? So the movement of inertia across that axis for that particular molecule will be definitely zero, right? Accordingly, we can say it has two rotational degrees of freedom. So in case of linear molecules, how many vibrational degrees of freedom are possible? Having n number of atoms, definitely uh, 3 were for translational motions, 2 were for rotational motions. So 3 plus 2 becomes 5. So we are left with vibrational degrees of freedom that is 3n minus 5, right? Let us try to find out the vibrational degrees of freedom with reference to certain diatomic and linear polyatomic molecules as well. A diatomic molecule we know is always linear like HCl, carbon monoxide and so on. So how many vibrational degrees of freedom that you can find out with, by simply applying the formula 
3 n minus 5 where n is the number of atoms involved within that molecule so in case of hcl for instance there are two atoms hydrogen and chlorine so n is 2 so that becomes 3 into 2 minus 5 so the value comes to 1 right so how many vibrational degrees of freedom are possible for diatomic molecule only one if you consider an, another example for linear polyatomic molecules like carbon dioxide so in this case the vibrational degrees of freedom again we can find out with the help of the same formula there are three atoms in carbon dioxide so accordingly we have 3 into 3 minus 5 and the number of vibrational degrees of freedom come to 4 okay if you are clear with the linear molecule concept then we will move to the non-linear molecules a non-linear molecule like methane which is having a tetrahedral arrangement as you can observe is free to rotate about x-axis about y-axis as well as about z-axis so accordingly we can say a non-linear molecule in addition to three translational degrees of freedom it also has three rotational degrees of freedom right so if we want to find out now the vibrational degrees of freedom possible in case of non-linear molecules so we are left with how much we had originally 3n degrees of freedom for the molecule minus 6 3 for translational 3 for rotational so that makes 3 plus 3 6 so the vibrational degrees of freedom possible for non-linear molecules is 3n minus 6 now let us try to find out the vibrational degrees of freedom by taking certain examples for non-linear polyatomic molecule such as water n is equal to 3 there are 3 atoms present so the vibrational degrees of freedom are given by 3n minus 6 3 into 3 minus 6 so we are left with three vibrational degrees of freedom taken another example of methyl chloride how many number of atoms are possible here n is equal to 5 so the vibrational degrees of freedom again 3n minus 6 that's equal to 3 into 5 minus 6 so the number of vibrational degrees of freedom come to 9 right so basically i can say this vibrational degrees of freedom represent the number of independent normal modes of vibration a molecule can show Okay, so that's about the degrees of freedom and that's for this particular video. Thank you. For